Weather Warriors, come on in. Welcome to this special segment for this winter. Is it going to be an El Nino, La Nina, and La Nina or La Nada winter? That's what we're going to talk about this video. What does that mean for a winter? Now, if you haven't seen my winter forecast, my official first winter forecast, click this link up here, this card, or click the description. There's a link down there. And I go into detail, like, and I'll talk about your snowfall maps, your temperature maps, the storm track, where blizzards could line up this winter. We go in more in details. This is just a video talking about whether it's going to be La Nina, El Nino, and La Nada, and what that means. So we'll crack right into this video. Now, this is where our temperatures are tip. What the? Typically, I just heard something loud outside. I don't know what that was. I'd have to check this out real quick. But anyway, let's get right back into it here. This is uh, where our temperatures are going to be for this winter, where we measure our sea surface temperatures. If this area is warm, that's typically an El Nino, and it's going to be uh, above average of 0 0.5 degrees for three months or greater. That's not the case, as you can see. A neutral is kind of in this area, maybe sometimes slightly cooler. You'll get cooler pockets. And a La Nada or, an El, or a La Nina is below 0 0.5 degrees for three or more months. Now, we got an animation. We'll show you how this plays out in a second. But it's trending cooler in this area. So that's very interesting. Here's the uh, sea surface temperatures plotted on a map for that region where we measure Enzo. And uh, here's your zero degree line. Your 0 0.5 is up here. Whoops, a little bit higher than that. And then negative 0 0.5 is down here. So this is going to be La Nina down here. This is going to be an El Nino up here. And then everything in between is going to be a neutral. Again, it's got to be consistent. You know, one little blip isn't going to really make or break it. It's got to be three months or greater typically. So here is uh, our trend right here. This is about a week ago, but it is trending towards a La Nina. It's not a La Nina but it is trending towards it. I think it's gonna kind of plateau, maybe rise a little bit and plateau, and then end up somewhere in the neutral range. It's actually not what the models are saying as much, and I'll go over that in a second. What is some of the models saying? Well, this is the predicted uh, probability. Here's your Enzo's up here. This is a uh, blue is La Nina, gray is neutral, and red is El Nino. December, January, February, or winter months are right here. Your uh, neutral is the highest at around 50%. Your second highest is El Nino, and that's around a 40%. Your La Nina is around a 10%. I don't really agree with that. Um, you know, everything I've been looking at, I would actually make this, and if I were forecasting, more like a 60%. El Nino, more like a, a 20% or a 10%. And then whatever's left over at La Nina, maybe around whatever that is, 30 or 40%. So that's where I would uh, put those. Now, what do you get with a neutral winner? Because that's what I'm thinking. Now, We'll look at the uh, trends here in a second, the sea surface temperature trends with the uh, animation here. But this is typically what you get during an, a neutral winter. You get your polar air masses. They'll build up here and they'll ride to the south. Typically cold temperatures in the northeast quadrant of the United States, north central area of the United States as well. This is where your Arctic air masses are going to build. Not like dangerously cold, but colder than average. Your subtropical jet stream, your other jet stream down to the south here, typically weaker during a neutral, especially weaker during a La Nina, but not as strong as it was last year during an El Nino winter. So this will be shut off a little bit more than it was last winter, but you'll still get some instances of it, which could deliver slightly uh, wetter than average conditions in the southeastern United States. And uh, where these things line up, you could get potentially some... Uh, some interesting activity out here in the mid-Atlantic and just north of there where maybe some blizzards could occur this winter. So that's what a typical pattern looks like for a neutral winter. Now let's look at the trends here. We put an animation here of the sea surface temperatures. This is the area you're going to want to watch right here. Okay, this is where your temperatures are. The oranges are warm, more indicative of a, a uh, El Nino winter. And then the uh, blue is going to be colder. That's uh, closer to a La Nina. And it's kind of uh, in between, maybe slightly cold, is a neutral. So let's look at this real quick. This is February of 2019. Now watch what happens here. This is March, April, May, June. Starting to trend colder. July, August. And this kind of jumps. But this is the area we're looking at. September. And look at that. It's gotten a lot cooler in this region. Pockets of warm, pockets of cold. But overall, it's kind of trending towards maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.5 average below average at the moment this has got to remain consistent this can kind of jump up and down a little bit 
but it is trending towards a neutral to a borderline La Nina. I think it's going to kind of flatline at a neutral, maybe a little bit slightly cooler than average type winner. And uh, let's look at the uh, trends real quick here. This is the SOI. This is the uh, Enzo that we were reading here. And you can see the past few months have been below average, not terribly below average, but around averaging about negative uh, two, negative three uh, degrees below average. That trend may continue as we get towards winter. Now, what do the models say? Well, here's the models here. This is, uh, I believe, late August. They won't update this until late September again, but this is late August run. And these are several models here. Here's all your models right here that are forecasting the Enzo. Again, this 0 0.5 is and above for three months or greater, you're gonna get a El Nino. And then this area and below is gonna be a La Nina. Notice that most of these models are in the neutral category to potentially even El Nino. I don't really agree with them based off some things, I was some trends. I think everything's kind of verifying a little bit colder than average because if you look at September, you know, this is around now, the average actually had it at 0 0.3, but when we looked back, we'll go back here, the average right now is, uh, well, I mean, I guess we could average this out. It's it's still, it's probably negative three below average, or uh, below, uh, yeah, the anomaly is negative 0.3. And then that model uh, had them at about above 0.3. So there are some uh, some verification uh, issues here. But again, that could change. We'll see what happens. But the models are actually forecasting. Here's, uh, let's see, December, January, February. This is winter right here. They're forecasting around maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4 degrees above average, but still in the neutral range. So that's still a neutral type pattern. There is one model. Uh, let's see, that's, you yeah, know, there's one model that's way far south. It actually has a, a, a moderate El, or a La Nina, so that's kind of interesting to watch. Everything else is over here, and then there's an outlier down there. Uh, but for the most part, I think that these are um, maybe just a slightly a little bit warm. I think it could end up somewhere in this region right here, near or just slightly below average temperatures. Here's another uh, variation of this thing. This thing right here is the CFS V2. You can actually access this on tropicaltidbits.com. I'm not going to write that all that out, but tropicaltidbits.com. They do have models, and you can view, view the CFS V2 on there, I believe. I know you can at least view the CFS, uh, but they do have a model on there. You can view uh, temperatures and sea surface temperatures months out in advance and uh, visual graphics as well. But this is actually indicating something more like what I thought would happen. CFS isn't always accurate, but I think maybe it has a better idea in this instance right here. This is January or December, January, February, and it's got about negative 0.2 degrees, negative 0.3 degrees below average. Probably going to be uh, what it's uh, going to be like this winter, again, what I'm forecasting. Kind of going against some of these models, but that's what I'm going to be forecasting this winter. So I think this winter you're going to get a neutral type pattern with the potential for a cool and neutral type pattern, which again will bring us this type of pattern across the United States, which will uh, look at the temperature map here, bring slightly below average temperatures in this region right here in the northeastern United States and potentially moderately below average out here in the north northeastern United States, two to four degrees below average. And then above average out here, slightly above for the southwestern United States and southern plains. And then uh, moderately above, somewhere in the California, Nevada, Arizona region with four degrees above average potentially there. So that's the temperature outlook. I've got a snowfall map that shows you snowfall amounts and then also precipitation and also talk about storm track in my winter forecast video. So if it doesn't pop up here, check the link in the description or check it out on my channel. And I go into detail on how much snow and the precipitation you could get for this winter. So this is just a quick update on the Enzo. We're going to be releasing more of these videos in the future, these state of the Enzo addresses in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Subscribe because we got more of these and we got more winter forecasts coming. Hit the like button if you like this video. Check out that winter forecast. And as always, hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you soon.